Hi guys and welcome to another GT Sport video, uh, another round of the Club 100 League. This is round 4, but of course we're missing the round previously which we had to cancel due to disconnections and whatever. Now I am aware we have had a slight increase in subscribers and viewers and all sorts due to one of the videos going viral, which is pretty bonkers. I think it's on... <laughs> Last time I looked, maybe near a quarter of a million views, which is just absolute insanity. So thanks for that. Thank you, YouTube algorithm, and all that jazz. <laughs> but yeah, if you're new to this, this is Club 100 League, uh, which is Club 100 is a karting series that I take part in in real life. And during lockdown, we, it was decided to make a esports league in Gran Turismo, and thought, why not? And this is the third season now, and yeah, it's been going good. So, this is the first race, spec car, Mazda touring car, and then the second race is a group three race in, with tire wear, fuel, no not fuel, sorry, just tire wear. And that's in a car of our choice, rather than a spec car where everyone's the same car. But yeah, this is qualified now, uh, so we qualify for the spec, spec race, and then the finishing, finishing positions are reversed for the feature race, race 2 of the um, round. So, this is Magill Centre, very small track, lots of laps to be done here and lots of slipstream to be had, so we're trying to find a good spot here behind Luke, who seems to be quite good at getting a good toe, or at least he seems to be very good at stealing Trev's toe normally, but we've stolen his and Trev's stolen ours, so we're up into P2, which is not bad. We don't want to have a repeat of last round, I won't spoil it, but obviously you can tell by my tone it wasn't great. <laughs> but here now we're going to go to my fastest lap, so I've just let my teammate through, we were trying to work together and get a good tow. We weren't we weren't really getting the best out of it to be honest, we weren't quite having the luck and just the way of the slipstream, it's pretty difficult to judge all the time, but I had quite a nice position here behind my teammate and behind Tim, so we're going to use them now, try and close up on them throughout this lap see if we can improve our position from 5th at the moment. Also, you did see a bit of lag there, that is a common feature. For some reason in this particular round I was lagging a hell of a lot. I didn't notice it much, but everyone else noticed it on me basically. But yeah, thankfully Tim hasn't pulled out of the way, so we're going to get a nice toe up through the S's. We're actually purple at this point, which is, well, very promising. Going into this final call though, we really needed Tim to stay in front so we could have this toe down this front straight now as well, just to give us that extra bit of speed. But unfortunately, Tim dropped him behind for his own his own benefit, and we're going to lose just a touch of time and actually <laughs> only go one thousandth as a second quicker. So it was hardly worth doing that. <laughs> but and that's where we ended up. We're two temps off, which is to be fair quite a bit actually around this track. But that's going to end up putting us. Uh, I don't think it's going to put us in sixth, is it? Oh, it is. Okay. So we actually out, out qualified Steve. I don't think I realised that at the time. But yeah, so starting sixth, we've pipped Steve to his favourite position of sixth. And yeah, we're entering the race now. It's a grid start. So if you don't know Gran Turismo, for some reason, you can't get traction off the line. So you have to use traction control. It's just the way the game is. It is very weird for getting a standing start right, so you have to put trash control on, which you'll see me do, most likely. Unless this replay of my race, there you go, see so scrolling through the menus. Ah, this is what caught me out. So this was, we had a lot of issues with these lobbies, and it ended up being set up by different people and all sorts, and we didn't have the full start check, so it sort of completely ruined my way of thinking for that whole section. But we got a bad start, but we just held on to 7th, lost the place to Steve, but it was okay, and then you can see out front there, it looks like Nathan's turn around Trevor, which is not ideal. Obviously just getting a bit close for comfort up front, and that's already broken away the top two. So you can see Luke and Tim up front, Pat is racing, who's also producing videos, as well as Steve, Kira, a bunch of people in this league are producing videos now, and they're all really good content, so check them all out please. Yeah, coming through here now, end of lap one, and Trev gets a bit aggressive, pushes Steve and Mark off, and they 
both sort of come back onto the track and it pitches Trev round into what can only be described as the mother of all tank slappers here as he spins as he drifts across the front straight and then out of nowhere look at the radar bang there comes Jack making his usual entrance <laughs> and all oh, all oh, manner of carnage is going on behind not quite sure what's going on there but that, that was just absolutely bonkers and in all that we've managed to get through it so I will take that any day but as you can see the top two have got away and I wasn't too quick um, at this track Oh, and here you go, you can see where we lost it, so Nathan gets shoved off and Nathan just <laughs> drills back into the pack to save some positions I guess, but you can see where me and Mark got away there. So we've got two packs of two here, you've got Batters and Tim, and then you've got me and Mark, and then Nathan and Steve potentially coming up behind us as well. But yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't doing the best around this track, there was definitely a lot faster people around, but I tried my best. <laughs> You see, we're 2.6 seconds behind, it looks like, so got quite a margin to make up, and then a 40 second lap, or whatever it is, that takes time to catch up like a lot of time. So, what we'll do is we'll skip through some of these laps, and you can just see the progression of the time trying to catch back up to them because it's very tricky, especially when they work together. When they don't work together, it's a bit better, but unfortunately, Tim and Luke had sensible ideas which are pretty boring I think we should all agree that they should just start battling all the time make it much more entertaining yeah end of uh, end of lap 3 onto lap 4 now and you can see now so 2.5 is the gap coming into lap 5 2.5 is still the gap this is to the leader I'm looking at so 2.5 to the leader still 2.5 again times are very consistent 47.8 2.4 gained a tenth yippee <laughs> and then I think we do start to make a little bit more progress 2.3 or 4 I glitched about to so. but we did slowly start to make our way towards the front very very slowly as you can tell by the way these <laughs> these races are going I just had to also deal with Mark being sometimes I'm not the best on the brakes and Mark's probably a bit better than me on the brakes especially in these cars and he just likes to give you a nudge every now and again, which is it's frustrating and it's, and it's tricky to manage because you can't then run your best lines or best speed because you're sort of making mistakes and stuff. And you can see, yeah, I just run wide watching Luke and Tim fight and then Mark comes on the outside like we could gain a bit of time here because they've swapped positions. But Mark wants to <laughs> put us in a compromising position here so we can't make up as much time as we really wanted to which is just not ideal so you can see I'm having to take a defensive line here trying to hold the position where we could have gained a bit of time there we've now sort of stayed where we were we're two seconds off so we've gained half a second in about I don't know seven laps and then you see here Luke going back back ahead again forcing him out we're now only 1.6 behind is that 1.8 behind I'm going to keep closing up now onto the back of the front pair 1.5 the slipstream range is 0.75 on this game so we, if we get into that we're golden but we've got still quite a bit of work to do but we're gaining quite a bit into that first corner just trying to trying as hard as I can to catch up just get into that slipstream range you can see the gap to Tim now is just verging under a second now so we're really really close here to getting a toe as you see, Nathan and Steve behind have also joined the battle, so that's another thing to worry about. Because Nathan obviously is very quick. If you didn't know, he's, he's leading the championship at this point. Quite healthily leading the championship. And you can see in the radar there, absolutely sends it on his teammate. No team orders there. That was a surprise attack by the looks of it there. <laughs> team Orange having a quick bash against each other by the looks of it. But yeah, that's that's a bit of a worry, but I wasn't really bothered. If Nathan came past me, I was quite happy to sort of let him tow us up, and then we can have a big fight at the end. I was quite looking forward to it, and you see at this point here, I'm 0.8. I'm right on the, so close to getting Tim's tow, and of course every time we get to a straight again, they just pull away again because Tim's got the slipstream of Luke. But now I've got Nathan to worry about, and I don't I don't see him waiting, so I'm pretty prepared to just let him have the corner and just get on my race to be honest. So you can see he's coming up the inside now. I'm just going to hold it. 
just keep my car, try not to lose as any time as possible. If I can sort of hold some speed up, and we're just we're just gonna get shoved off. Um, I don't really know what to say about that. <laughs> we just be absolutely shoved off, and we've lost three positions. Not ideal. I mean, we're gonna have to obviously have a look at that because that was. I don't feel like that was called for, but maybe I mis misread that situation. But. Yeah, I was maybe I don't know, a quarter of a car alongside him and just <laughs> straight into the wall. <laughs> I mean, it's it's hard enough trying to catch these cars up. I've got a slip, yeah, you can see the split screen now. So I, I give Nathan room the inside and then Nathan just sort of squares the car up and just takes us into the wall. I don't know really what to say about that. I wasn't very happy and you can see now I've actually lost the toe, which is just... <laughs> the worst thing out of all the things that could have happened that's pretty much the worst thing not only did I get shoved off and taken out <laughs> I've lost <laughs> three positions in total and the slipstream so proper ruined my chances of getting the win or the podium or anything here thankfully they're fighting in front so I am managing to get back into the toe but I was pretty <laughs> I was fuming at this point to be honest that that move it just didn't sit right with me at all, but what can you do, eh? What can you do? So, I've done my best lap of the race there, using a bit of toe. That's the first time I've had a bit of slipstream, so it sort of makes sense that I've got the first first time I've got a decent lap. And we're right on the back of Mark again, so we can sort of... problem is now I've got <laughs> two... Everyone in front of me has all got the slipstream of each other, which is means it's just difficult for me to get the run I need to try and get alongside him, try and make a manoeuvre. You can see they're all weaving all over the place, trying to break the toe, trying to hide, but we're going to make a big, nice, deep braking manoeuvre there. Clip the apex nicely, but Mark, fair play to him, he does the undercut, under and over, and he just gets up the inside, he's just got a nose there. I mean, judging by the rules earlier, I probably could have just put him in the wall, but we're not going to. And he's, yeah, we're going to have to give him space now, he's got quite a bit of car alongside. Although still questionable, but I'll leave it for now. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know why Mark's indicating here. I I can't remember what the reason was for that. But we're going to try and make another move now. Mark cuts across quite late and aggressive, and I from his I had quite a lot of lag going into this, so I, I I might not have been where I thought like I should have been on his screen maybe or something. But like if he knew where I was, that was a bit cheeky to be honest. But yeah, it, it just wasn't going my way. But we got now the last... Uh, is this the last lap? No, not quite the last lap. We're coming on to the last lap now, I believe. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. it's coming on to the last lap now. So we've caught back up to Mark. You see Nathan's got away a bit. Mark and Steve have been fine. So we're now just trying to hope to get any sort of salvage anything from this because really I need to beat Nathan in this race to give me any chance of retaining my title in the um, Club 100 League and it's, it's all just sort of slipping away at the moment can't really do much to well get a good result here so we're just going to stay as close as we can and try and set ourselves up to take advantage of whatever happens here so I'm keeping my own situation I'm, I'm going to give myself the widest possible line to make sure I've got the best corner I can Mark goes insanely wide they both go wide actually I get a nice run on Mark I'm past Mark and I've got the run on Steve could it be a repeat of Sardinia I don't know why I changed my camera angle there but we're just not quite well I don't know where I was on his screen but <laughs> he lurched forward on mine but we didn't quite get him unfortunately so had to sell for fifth good result in the end I guess because I, I wasn't expecting much from this race but I felt <laughs> I felt pretty robbed after that move anyway, but it's yeah I don't know you can't do much about that now so it is what it is fifth place could have been better but they drive a bit faster I think next time catch up the leaders rather than dawdle around in the third for ages but anyway this is race two now so you can see the field of Corvettes and a Jag. And then my Viper, just on the back left there. And then one more Jag and that's it. <laughs> wow. So yeah, it was quite a one-make series, this one, unfortunately, because the Corvette seemed to have quite a bit of an advantage at the first few tracks. So everyone seemed to pick it, if you're new to this. 
But yeah, Viper's got a good launch though. But so is the Corvette to be fair, so it's not too much of a game. But yeah. Away we go. Into turn one. Trying to find the space. And we well. We actually get a really nice run here, right between two of the cars, and then we're just gonna I'm not sure what really that move was where I sort of slid left there, but I nearly got up the inside of Sam as well here. Which is a pretty impressive move to be fair. And we're thinking about going up the inside but not quite enough. We're gonna just have to hold back a minute. Try not to make contact with Sam as best we can. Bearing in mind as well that people still don't quite know where I am on track so when we're racing in these leagues we're we're all in a group chat chatting and at this point I was hearing things from people saying whoa this whoa that because <laughs> they couldn't see basically where I was I was flying away over their screens whereas of course as you can see on my screen it looks perfectly reasonable but we're already up into fourth so obviously we started a bit closer to the front this time because we finished down in fifth rather than nearer the front like we'd hoped so already up to fourth, and this this race can be a no stop because the pit lane loss time is so big around these tracks. It's it's just not not good enough to pit. You have to have a bit more tyre wear or a longer race to actually make it worth pitting. So I'm trying to drive as smooth as possible while trying to get to the front of this pack and just basically trying to be because this this car's quite tricky to drive, especially under braking. So every sort of input I'm trying to do is really really gentle and on the way into corners really making sure I don't slide it at all if I can help it and we're going to get a nice run here on Rob on Rob Dowsett another person with a YouTube channel he's done lots of Club 100 co content make sure to check him out as well actually we've got all the YouTubers in one go here apart from Steve from 3rd down to 6th and Rob's going to go a bit wide here and overshoot and we're going to get on the inside just avoid contact and now running up to maybe turn five six i don't know names but this is an example of the lag that people were seeing that i wasn't so look <laughs> this is what rob saw basically of me flying across the screen god knows how he felt <laughs> trying to drive around someone who's moving around the screen like that but yeah up into third already lap two it's going pretty well right behind my teammate now cal and Cal just makes a little mistake going into here, gets on the power a bit too early and just runs wide. And on the raid on the um team chat or whatever on the group chat we were, I was just saying, Cal, 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 on your right, on your right, sort of thing, just because <laughs> the last I wanted to do is take him out or to have us collide, so Yeah, so we're through now. I was hoping Cal could do a bit of a blockade now for anyone else behind, but I just had to focus on my race and try and get up to the front catch up to Jack now who's been driving very well in the Corvette actually. Annoyingly quick at this moment in time because I really <laughs> want to just be out front and just do my own my own pace and not think about anyone else. But had to deal with Jack first. So trying to get a nice run here that Viper understands like hell through these corners so you've got to be so patient. If you get a if you get a dodgy line you just you're out in the scenery out in the car park somewhere. So breaking in turn four. I don't know the names, I wish I did because it makes this a lot easier to work out where I am because I don't know the numbers. But yeah, the Viper seems to be really good in the middle sector here. Mainly due to gearing, I feel, and traction. It's it's really good in like second gear. But yeah, at this point here I was really hoping that I could just find a nice easy place to pass Jack, but I was struggling. I could not find a nice simple hotel. I was thinking in here, but he's defending as well, which I just saw. Oh, that's that's all right. Take my time. No one's near me. I've got a big gap behind. I can't see Nathan or Luke or Steve or anyone else who has the potential to, to really sort of challenge for this victory. So I'm just waiting my time, trying to make sure I don't make some clumsy manoeuvre and take him off or run him off the track. So got a nice run up here. Corvette's very fast and straight line, which is also another reason why quite a lot of people picked it. But I'm <laughs> barely pinned alongside him, even after all that slip through. But he's going to stay on the inside and defend it, so I'm, I can't really do much from the outside, so I'm just going to set myself up, try and get a nice run down into turn four and go for it again. And we've got an okay run, we're gaining, we're gaining just a little bit. Pull out the slipstream. 
and we hit a brick wall about here and you can tell <laughs> I send up the inside nice and controlled under the raking don't run wide and well that's that's how you make a move I think <laughs> didn't make any contact or anything like that just straight through and now we can sort of focus on just trying to manage the tyres as long as we can because that is so tricky around this track and especially in the Viper because so the, the braking on this car is just all over the place so I just got to settle into room now I would have liked fast slap but you can see I missed out by a pretty small margin because he got a slightly better toe than I did on my lap because <laughs> I got that obviously when I was following Jack trying to get a bit of a toe from him but you can see I'm up here but with no toe I can't can't make that time up and already I've managed to get out of the slipstream of Jack now so we're, we're pretty calm now I can just run my own race I'm, I'm pretty happy around into Lago so I can run that laps around there all day I'm pretty sure <laughs> so it's a try I'm very familiar with car I'm very very familiar with so I can just run the laps down now try and be as consistent as possible and hopefully not have an Austria where Nathan comes back to bite me right at the end speaking of Nathan if you look at the raid, uh, not the radar, sorry, the tower top left, he's now just moved his way past Jack and he is now in pursuit in a very similar sort of position actually to um, Austria as well, which is rather interesting. So if you look at the gap there, you've got two seconds, which we've got to manage and say Nathan's a formidable opponent at the best of times, let alone when he's in a really really good handling car so we're gonna have to just keep our wits about us I felt confident I could hold him off if I just drove well so I'm not really pushing anything so I'm just keeping the rhythm up trying to do low 30s as much as possible and not burn out the tires which is the most crucial thing to be honest but you see at the moment he's not put any dent in that time in fact we've probably gained a little bit since he's been in front of Jack you can see on the delta though we do lose a little bit down the straight, but it's not too bad. But yeah, coming up to so this is now the final lap, 30 seconds to go on the time remaining, and that was pretty much what it was. He did get, I think, within maybe 1.5 at one point, but I think he just pushed his tyres a little bit too much because now, look, you can see he's up to nearly up to three seconds now on the um, tower on the top left. Doing a little drift there, showboat <laughs> for the fans. They're all sitting at their computer screens. They're coming through the last corner now. You can see the times there. Eventually the tyres do drop off, so we're into the 31s now. Just doing low 30s to mid 30s and just time slowly creeping up as the tyre wear goes up. But we're going to take this win now. Sam's waiting for us at the line because he didn't want to do another lap, but it's okay. We're going to throw across the line. Sideways is the usual best way to celebrate a win. And that's, well, we'll see how that's affected the championship, but it was already looking pretty tough to um, keep the championship alive at this point. There was only one more race to go after this, and you get 26 points max for a race win and fastest lap. So, but good to take another race win. Puts me up to two. Nathan's on three, and then there's a couple on one. But you see there, there's the results. So obviously I came fifth in the first one, then uh, first in race two. And then here is the championship standings, and you can see Nathan has a 30-point lead. So that is, at this point, barring any switching of car for potentially, well, if you change car, you lose championship points, things like that. We've, we're out of it. So that is the end of this this episode. Hope you've enjoyed. Once again, thanks for all the views and subscribers that have recently appeared, and I'll see you again on the next episode. See ya.